So I'm firing up recording again. Let me just make sure that's working. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna publish this map. Uh, if you all have any map open in Tableau or really any visualization, you should be able to follow through. Uh, okay, so the way we uh, publish, first of all, is we have to push this to uh, Tableau Public. We're gonna get an error when we try to publish, when we go to, uh, what is it, a server, Tableau Public, save the Tableau Public. Let's see if I get the error. Yep. It looks a little scary, but all that means is, all that error message said is we have to hit the extract button. So we can handle that, right? <laughs> I'm gonna go to data source and hit this extract button. That should be it. Let me just make sure these aren't all separate. Yeah, it extracted all of them. Okay, so let me go back to my sheet. Oh yeah, every time we hit extract, it's gonna demand that you save this extraction. I was pointing this out at our last class, but it's gonna save it as a dot hyper file. Those are not cross-platform, that's only for Tableau. So I just let those save where Tableau wants to save them. And I never worry about finding them. Okay, I had to think for a while, it is making a copy of the data. Now we should be able to publish. So server, Tableau public, save the Tableau public. Ooh, we need to name it. Uh, Phil, oh boy, Philadelphia food. Deserts. Oh, this is hardly a map that's really generating that, but let's just imagine that was our project. Okay, I hit save. It's going to think a minute, and then it should pop open my default browser uh, and show us this file. So the nice thing about Tableau Public is it hosts all this stuff for free. Uh, we can go right back to Tableau Desktop and push another version of this out and overwrite it if there was a problem, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one unfortunate thing is the URL is really, really long and messy. And what I mean is if we go to rpubs.com, let me just go to my page. Oh, these are a lot cleaner, right? So if I click on one of these projects, it's rpubs.com, my username and my name and my project. So that's a really clean URL. So broadly speaking, I think it's better to share uh, content from our pubs just in terms of clean links. Uh, what we need to do is we've created our map and it's online. It has a URL. So now we have to make an R markdown file and get this map into the R markdown file. So that's gonna be uh, our next tricky thing. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna minimize all of my instances of Tableau. We don't need those right now. Uh, and I'm gonna switch over into R. So if you're working along with me, whatever you have open in R, I'm just gonna do file new file, R markdown. Uh, we don't have to worry about paths here. We're gonna embed all this stuff online, right? It's not using local files. So we don't have to worry about projects and stuff like that. This is defaulting to untitled. So I'm gonna call it Philadelphia, that's a long word, food deserts. Remember, other than that, we don't really wanna change any of these options. They're pretty much exactly what we want. Uh, let me hit OK. So to remind everyone, um, oh, by the way, these are the uh, COVID cases in North Carolina. Uh, not as fast as people predicted with the latest variant, but they are increasing in the Northeast faster than they are here. So we'll see if we have something to talk about next week. Anyways, when I make a new um, our markdown file, remember, it comes with all this default stuff. And our general rule is we can go in and delete most of this. So let me just remind everyone what we can delete and what we cannot. This uh, first six lines is called the YAML header. Don't mess with that. <laughs> Unless you're intentionally trying to add something through that, I would not mess with it because it won't knit and you'll get really confusing error messages. This first code chunk uh, is actually kind of useful to keep. What it's saying is uh, uh, by default, let's show our uh, code. Uh, when we um, render out these code chunks. And by the way, this code chunk itself will be invisible because it says include equals false. We haven't had to talk about that, but it's not gonna show up at all in the R markdown file. So if you ever have to do something kind of behind the scenes, that's how you can do it. What I'm gonna do is go below all that and delete. Okay, so this were my project on food deserts. I'd probably do like, uh, you know, some hashtags to create large stuff like food deserts in Philadelphia. Yeah, and then, you know, 
text, text, text. <laughs> Maybe a link to uh, HTTPS colon slash slash open data philly.org, something like that. Okay, anyways, we'd be populating our project. So how do we get our map in here? Um, well, this is gonna be the uh, interesting part. I'm going to switch back over to Tableau. I'm sorry, let me clarify. I'm not in Tableau. I'm in my browser and I'm looking at Tableau Public. That is an important distinction. We cannot do this just from Tableau Desktop. Uh, I'm gonna click on this uh, share button, the three dots connected by a line, and we want this embed code. We took a brief look at this embed code our last class. It's insane. It's like 20 lines long or something, and it just looks like pure gibberish. So this is the codiest code thing we're going to do today. <laughs> and it's not even R. What we're going to be doing is dealing with HTML and JavaScript. Uh, by the way, I figured this out myself last year. I have never found this on a tutorial or anything. Uh, I'm going to copy that entire embed code. So I just did uh, Command C with my cursor in there. Make sure you don't get the link. We can't use the link. We got to get the embed code. OK, I'm going to go over here to my R Markdown file. And as I mentioned, we're going to paste in a bunch of code. So I'm going to put a line in just so I know where that code starts and stops. You know what I mean? OK, so let me hit paste. And we just get a ton of gibberish. <laughs> uh, that is a true statement. OK, uh, I was trying to dissect this really quickly in our last class. But what is going on here? We have a combination of two things. Uh, HTML and JavaScript. We do not need to know or understand either of these languages to get them to work. But we do need to understand, uh, I guess, two things. First of all, and we haven't seen this in like a month, but as a reminder, we can write HTML and CSS directly into our markdown files. So all of this HTML is totally fine. We don't have to do anything to it. The second part of this is somewhere in here starts some JavaScript. And what we do have to do is separate that from the HTML and put it in its own JavaScript code chunk. <laughs> it sounds like I'm, I'm speaking another language. We kind of are. So all HTML tags have these um, carrots around them, right? The greater than or less than signs. And you can kind of figure out where these tags open and close based on that closing tag. So if I wanted to clean up all this HTML, I could go to these instances like here where those two spots meet and just hit enter. This is not necessary at all. I'm just trying to indicate uh, to you how this is written out and how it is actually like pretty straightforward code. But what they did is they removed all the spaces or minified it. So it's all crammed together and really hard to read. So this looks a little bit more like HTML. Uh, okay, what I'm gonna do, and this is the only important part here. So that first part with the formatting the HTML doesn't matter. But HTML could be all crammed together in one line and it would run fine. Here is our complicated part. We need to find this snippet right here in all this code. It's towards the bottom. It'll be about six lines up, depending on how wide your screen is. And it says script type equals JavaScript. So let's, starting there, separate that. Get it totally away from the HTML. Uh, that's where our JavaScript starts. It's probably not a surprise. And the spacing of it, at least on my screen, got really weird. So I'm going to hit Enter here. I'm going to hit enter here. What you'll notice is there is a semicolon at the end of every one of these JavaScript lines. I'm kind of using that as a way to figure out how to format this. Now, again, we don't have to format this. If we are making this more legible, it's only for humans. Computers do not care about how legible your code is. Uh, I like to make my code legible. <laughs> uh, that's kind of my thing. My main uh, aim, though, is to separate these on separate lines because this first line and this last time line, that's actually HTML, right? This is HTML indicating to uh, the browser, I guess. This next little section is going to be in JavaScript. So that's what we have to replace with opening and closing code chunks. It's pretty weird, huh? <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is try to uh, delete this. So script type equals JavaScript. I've got that on its own line, and I'm going to delete it and hit back tick, back tick, back tick. And then we'll create a bracket. I'm going to say JS for JavaScript. Uh, and like it, we have to name it. So I'll say embed code, something like that. <laughs> uh, we have parameter options, right? Message, include, we saw a minute ago. Let's just wait and we can play with those in a second. Uh, down here where the closing script tag is, we have to delete that as well and replace it with essentially the same uh, equivalency, which is 
the back ticks closing this. So to put this into a more kind of like logical way of saying it, there are uh, snippets of code in this HTML that indicate now it's time to load a JavaScript file. We've taken those out and we are telling it in our markdown terms how to run JavaScript in a little window. Uh, reason I was emphasizing that I had kind of discovered this on my own is I didn't know it was possible to create a JavaScript code chunk. It's not one of the options. <laughs> so it's like, wow, okay, can we plug like any language in there? Uh, by the way, you can add Python into our markdown, uh, the same method. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. We'll only really be able to test it when we publish this R markdown file. So I'm going to save this. We can't publish until we save. I'm just going to call this test embed. You can see that this is a kind of complicated process. So what I'm hoping is everyone will have kind of like a walkthrough of this. And then when you go to put your uh, project together, uh, you can reference uh, what you've already done and see if you can get it to work. Okay, so I hit save. So now I'm going to try to publish. So let me hit uh, knit, wait for some errors. Oh, okay. Anybody uh, knit without errors on the first try? It's like a immediate high five. <laughs> Okay, so I'm seeing some good things and I'm seeing some bad things. The first thing I wanted to point out is we're not gonna be able to see our map until we pop it open in the browser, which is fine, right? No one else is gonna see that little temporary thing. You see what's just timing out? So I just wanna warn everyone, if you see this timing out thing, just hit open in browser and it should work just fine. Mine's opening in Chrome, yours might open in uh, Safari, which is the default. I can see all my text up here. Everything looks really small on my computer. It looks like I was zoomed out, sorry. What's wrong with this? Well, not much, but look at all that junk we have at the bottom. That's our embed code, right? That's the JavaScript that we wrote out and it just printed it out because it didn't know what to do with it. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, can we hide it? I think so. Let's try echo equals false. Okay, and I'm gonna try to knit again. Now, now knitting becomes a little bit more of a process because we have to knit the whole document. We can't just knit that chunk. And then we have to hit open in browser <laughs> and see if it works. Okay, that looks good. And we got rid of the junk at the bottom. So again, uh, what I did is I went back to our embed code here and just added echo equals false. Uh, many of you will probably have multiple maps on your page. And I wanted to point out something that has uh, emerged as a problem this week. Uh, many of you are uh, intelligently copying and pasting your code chunks and then just changing the content. You have to have a different code chunk name for every single code chunk, or you're going to get a very confusing error when you try to knit. In fact, I'll leave both of these, right? So again, I just duplicated that exactly. And you get this like, whoa, <laughs> what was all that? I've never generated that much print back. Well, if we read this after we get through the really confusing stuff, duplicate chunk label embed code, which has been used for the chunk, and then it's just printing it out. So we could just call it embed code two. It would work just fine then. It just has to have a unique name. Okay, so now I think I'm publishing two maps. <laughs> Let's see, open in browser. So there's one. Oh, it only published one map. Okay, didn't I add that twice? Certainly looks like I added it twice. <laughs> uh, but when I go over to the browser, I am only seeing it once. That is interesting. Okay, well, obviously we wouldn't embed the same, uh, the same map twice. Let me save this one more time and knit. Uh, I'm just gonna check it by hitting open in browser and make sure that it's gonna work. Looks fine. You'll notice now I've got four tabs of this map open. This happens a lot when we're doing this work. So I'm just gonna close, close, close. Before I uh, try to do anything more, let me just point out, remember we can hit this like download button and look, it can download all this stuff, including our actual Tableau workbook. Now we can turn these things off. Oftentimes you'll find online where like municipalities have used Tableau. We'll turn off the data or Tableau workbook download buttons. Sometimes it's kind of frustrating. People overdo that. It's like you, you have the data on the same website. Just let me get it from here. Anyways, so we've got our map. Let me close that. Close, close. Okay, and it, we're still local, right? We haven't pushed this to uh, publish. So we have to go back to this kind of like failing pseudo browser thing that can't load the map. Uh, what's really happening here is we're telling these two programs that want to do all the work for us to work with each other and they don't want to, right? In other words, Tableau does not want us to use our markdown to publish. They want us to use Tableau 
public. That's why they have it. it. Makes perfect sense. I think it's more impressive, if anything, to be able to use these two technologies in combination with each other. And also, it is a nightmare to try to fill out a Tableau worksheet or um, uh, dashboard with all of the text and links and stuff that we're going to have to make in our project. So I'm going to hit uh, publish our pubs. Publish. <laughs> and if I'm logged into our pubs, it should just crank it out. It looks like I wasn't. <coughs> I'll call this test map. I have a lot of these. Uh, and there we go. So this would be my project. And this is the URL that you would send to me. So it's quite a process. You'll be working uh, a little bit in R and a little bit in Tableau. Uh, but like most of the stuff that we've done, it becomes repetitive. So if you do have a project with three maps, it's kind of like your last project where you had three word clouds. You just got to make sure everything has a different code chunk name, but that should be fine. When I view your project online, well, first of all, I'm going to close this. I'm going to always get these toolbars down here. So if you see those, don't worry about it. You can always hit hide toolbar. And we have alluded to this idea before, but essentially what you're creating uh, on our pubs is a repository of all of the work that you're doing in this class. And so what I would encourage everyone to do when this class is over, especially if you're ever going to use any of this stuff for on your portfolio, is to curate this a little bit. If you have a bunch of junk like I do, <laughs> I would get rid of that. I would make sure everything has a name and it looks nice when you open it up. Remember, we can always go back and replace these things with republish. But essentially, uh, I could have a, a portfolio and I could have all these uh, projects and uh, like linked to or embedded uh, using data science. What I think might be more impressive is just one link and it just goes to my R pubs. And this includes all my work in R, all my work in Tableau. Uh, and again, it's curated. So I get rid of all the junk that I have. Uh, and I think that would be pretty cool. It's not a requirement. Um, but it's, but, you know, R pubs is used by everybody in the, in the industry. So is Tableau public. So it's very valid for us to uh, use these online resources uh, in lieu of directly embedding content into our portfolios. Also, most of us are using uh, CMSs with themes and stuff like that. So it's not like we have 100% control over the appearance of the website. So it's a little bit better to kind of kick, kick that stuff out, I think, my opinion. <laughs> uh, okay, so dual access, uh, that worked pretty well, considering that that's something that always goes wrong in this class <laughs> when I try to do that in class. Uh,